This is one man trying to run under two hours, which has never been done before in the history of mankind. He's the only athlete in the world capable of doing this. I totally believe in myself, believe in my, my technical team, believe in my teammates, believe in my training, and, what's what, and that's what pushes me uh, beyond the party. We have liftoff. Apollo Kipchoge is up and away. So for anybody that was happening to maybe not be on the internet or be living in a hole this past weekend, Eliud Kipchoge was the first person to ever break two hours in the marathon. Oh! Yeah, you heard that right. He broke two hours in the marathon. That works out to something crazy like three minutes and 45 seconds per mile or four minutes and 34 seconds per Sometimes I feel like I have number dyslexia. He ran really fast for a really long time. And he became the first person to officially break two hours in the marathon ever in the course of history, in the course of time, the first person to ever run 26.2 miles in under two hours. This was something that was thought to be impossible and a lot of people highly doubted that it was ever going to be done, even some of the world's best marathoners. And that is a fair assumption because it's a ridiculous time for the marathon. And although he did technically run a marathon 26.2 miles in under two hours, it technically only counts as a Guinness world record and not as a marathon world record and, and how this makes any sense I just want to get this cleared out because a lot of people are talking about it as if it's a marathon world record and of course it's the 26.2 mile marathon world record but it's like a Guinness world record it's not like if you look up the marathon world record this time should not come up And there's a couple reasons why that is so. For one thing, it was within the limitations of how much downhill you can have and how much uphill and the net and the, all, the, all the technical details. The course was technically fine. The problem though lied within basically, he had pacers that did not start the race with him and that cycled throughout. And for some reason, this is not allowed. I, I actually don't know why this is a thing, but for some reason it's not allowed and also he had people on bikes giving him water bottles, which is not allowed uh, for some reason also. I think you're just supposed to like pick up your water bottle or something like that. I, I genuinely don't know why, but technically it's not a sanctioned marathon event. <laughs> Guys, they just need to make it easier on us. Just count it as the marathon world record. <laughs> But anyways, logistics out of the way, this is an incredible feat. I think a lot of people lose perspective on this when they just see him do this incredible thing where he's running super fast and looking super effortlessly gliding through the air. But if you think about it, there have been billions, billions of people to ever exist. And for some reason, nobody can run under two hours for the marathon except for this one human. And that's crazy. So for a little bit of a backstory, Eliud Kipchoge is a phenomenal distance runner. He's been running distance events for, for many years and he only really switched to the marathon a couple years ago, like, like 10 years ago or something like that. <laughs> but basically before his time of running marathons, he was on the track and he got like a bronze medal and like a silver medal in the Olympics or something like that in the 5K. I mean, he did some phenomenal stuff. He was a top level track athlete. And towards the end of his track career, he decided to switch over to marathons because you kind of lose your peak performance time when you kind of get past like that 26, 27 time and a lot of those people end up going to the marathon like Mo Farah who you know was one of the best track athletes arguably of all time and he is now running marathons like he just ran Chicago last weekend also. So yeah, Kipchoge isn't just some guy that popped out of nowhere. He has been doing this for many years. The first time they ran the marathon he showed immense aptitude. Year after year, Kipchoge kind of just chipped away at his time until he literally became one of the best marathoners in the entire world. In 2017, Nike basically held this project called the Breaking 2 
project where they design these shoes called the Vaporfly 4% and they're basically a shoe that is claimed to make you 4% more efficient and, and scientifically tested and they got Eliud Kipchoge, Lalisa de Sisa, and Zirzene Tedese. And basically they were supposed to be the three best people to break two hours in the marathon. And obviously in this project a lot of people thought that Kipchoge was the only one that could do it and the other ones were probably just gonna fail and they did all end up failing. They, they came really close though. But Kipchoge came within about 20 seconds, I believe, maybe 40 seconds, 20 to 40 seconds of two hours in the marathon. This was a huge step in the right direction for breaking the two hour marathon barrier because it kind of allowed people to understand that it was something that is possible. When you're within 20 to 40 seconds, I mean, it's so marginal in comparison to how long the event is. It's less than one 120th, so it's, it's like a couple seconds a mile, it's two seconds a mile, which is not much to shave off when you can gain a percent or two from drinking coffee and you could gain another percent or two from wearing some special shoes that Nike developed maybe for this most recent event. So yeah, they came really, really close. And of course, this was also not a sanctioned marathon, kind of like I was explaining earlier. They had pacers that rotated in and they had a special formation and it was, it was kind of a similar event to what happened at the Ineos 159 event. With that being said, the two hour barrier was not broken at that time and it wouldn't be for another two years until this weekend uh, when Ineos which is like a chemical company or something, basically sponsored this event that ended up leading to Kipchoge breaking two hours in the marathon. But before this even happened and before I really dive into kind of the science and some of the interesting things that I found about this event, I just wanna say that Kipchoge in between this time did end up breaking the official marathon world record and he ran a time of two hours, one minute and like 40 something seconds I believe. I think from a very real perspective, Kipchoge being able to break two hours in the marathon can highly be contributed to his stoic mindset or his, his very wholesome mindset and his, his approach to the sport as a He's whole. training and a lot of training, both of them are important. But you can be physically fit, but psychologically poor, and you cannot do anything. If you aim running 5,000 meters, uh, maybe at a time of 14 minutes, even if you are fit of running 13 and a half minutes and your mind actually is poor, then you can run 16 minutes. But you are fit to run 13, 13. That's why I'm saying I am not running on my legs alone. But I'm running with my heart and my mind. Just so much of that contributed to breaking two hours in the marathon. Becoming the first person to do something is not an easy feat as he, he's literally the first person to ever do it. And I think that being able to mentally just be on a different level from everybody else is a huge defining characteristic of Eliud Kipchoge. The quote for this entire event that he really gave was, no human is limited. And just to be able to have that mindset is phenomenal. There's no reason why human just can't break some arbitrary time and space. Obviously there are times that are unattainable, like you can't run a marathon in one second, not even, like, like literally light can't barely travel that fast. Okay, light can, light can travel that fast, but maybe, maybe sound's not that fast. But two hours was so close to the time that has already been run, so I just think that two hours was an incredibly attainable time. Not to say that was easy by any means, because 434 per mile is, is not easy in any world. Um, but, you know, I, I think it was something that was, it, it was possible. I think another huge contributor to Elliot breaking two hours in the marathon was the conditions and the course. Basically, there was like a 12 day window in which they would be running the marathon. Kipchoge didn't even really know until, you know, probably a couple hours before that he was gonna be racing that day. I think he was ready, but it was never known because the conditions had to be perfect. The humidity, the temperature, the everything. Weather can never be overlooked and I think that their consideration of weather is a huge factor as to how well this marathon played out. And I think more than just the weather in Vienna, the course that happened to be prepared in Vienna was a perfect course. I was running with somebody that happened to know somebody or actually work with somebody that basically 
calculated all their turns and figured out the distance and the net downhill and, and calculated it to make it a perfect course. They ran it so it was perfectly legal, perfectly within the net downhill terms and also perfectly within the, the, the calculated everything to make it the fastest. And on top of all of that being the weather and the course, he also had some of the best pacers in the entire world. Literally, Olympic gold medalists were helping pace him in this effort. I mean, they had the perfect drafting pattern. They changed the pattern from the sub two event and it's a new pattern that they designed that's even more efficient and apparently it can help you up to 33% in drafting. So basically like he might have saved 33% of energy because of this draft formation thing and also they were following a cart that had the perfect pace scanned out on the ground with a laser and, and it was literally the perfect conditions that's that, that's what I'm saying he everything was perfect for this race so all in all everything about this event was perfect his hydration his fueling the course the pacers the everything you could ever imagine was perfect and it allowed for Eliud Kipchoge to be able to break a barrier that was thought to be impossible Personally, I think this is just a phenomenal thing for the sport of running, for human endurance, for what is believed to be capable of the human body. I think it's just a remarkable feat that just cannot be discounted in any way. I think people may start to question, are the shoes rigged? Are, is the race blah blah blah? Is something messed up? And I honestly think all of that questioning and all of the everything should be disregarded. I think if you watch the race, a human towed the line and ran 26.2 miles in less than two hours. Regardless Regardless of everything else, he did that. And you can watch a human run 26.2 miles for under two hours, which is just phenomenal and just insane. And on top of that, it just proved that, you know, sometimes we believe things aren't possible and sometimes they really are. And I think that's just something amazing to embody and remember. And remembering that no human is limited is just something that's phenomenal. I think that's why I want to leave you guys with. Don't ever think that you are limited in any way, no matter what it is. But that is all for today. So I hope that you have enjoyed. And as usual, live happy and be healthy. I'll see you guys later.